Drew Sirocco, welcome to the Creative Gap Podcast. It's good to have you, and I'm very excited to talk to you today. Thanks, man. Likewise, it's, it's good to be here. Um, so for me, um, kind of growing my career as a DP in the Philly area, your name has definitely popped up more often than not. And uh, it, it, to me, it seems that you are like the one of the top DPs that came out of this Philly area. And uh, for me, as I've grown, I think I look to you, even though I never really met you, I look to you as kind of like an inspiration as to like what you can become in this Philly area and like grow outside of it. And you do a lot of work outside Philly. So I think it's, I think what you've built so far is really amazing. Um, and I'm just curious as to how you kind of got your, your start, what your background is in this film industry. Thanks, man. Uh, first off, th thanks for saying all that. That's like uh, super um, kind and uh, doesn't, I don't know, I feel uh, <laughs> not not worthy of uh, such <laughs> praise, but but uh, really means a lot. Um, um, yeah, I guess um, I, you know, I have a very uh, almost cliche uh, kind of beginning uh, uh or like entry point into the into the like this field or career i um i'm sure you've heard this before uh i grew up skateboarding and um classic yep <laughs> and uh um my dad actually like very briefly had um dabbled in the field and had a small like uh, production company where he made uh like corporate films and industrials like uh for a couple years when i was a kid and um so he had some cameras lying around the house and um you know when uh when it came time to like uh m m that like my group of friends wanted to you know start filming ourselves uh i was the guy who had access to cameras so i picked up a camera and went out and started making skate videos um with my friends when i was you know like 12 13 years old and then um uh after that in high school i i, I like i don't know kind of that was like the first exposure i had to any of it then kind of put it down for a little while and then like my senior year of high school i there was one film class uh that was offered and i took it and we had to make a short in that class and i guess that was like the first time where i had like initially kind of gotten the bug or like thought mm -hmm. like oh maybe this is something i might want to do um so then, you know, after that, I went to film school and uh, wow. studied cinematography, uh, went to Temple. Uh, you know, I've, I'm, mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, a very Philly uh, lifer. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, uh, and then graduated film school and started, uh, started work, just working my way up. I started out as a PA and um, did that for a few years before like getting into the camera department and then, um, working my way up in the camera department until, uh, but you know, I always knew that I wanted to shoot. So that was the goal mm. and just kind of did whatever I could to, to get there. Right. What about, um, I'm always curious as to like when someone decides they kind of want to pursue cinematography, like what about that specific position kind of intrigued you the most going into it? Yeah. Um, I, it's funny. I, I mean, I've always been, um, you know, like attracted to the, the visual element of filmmaking ever since I could kind of remember like going to the movies, uh, you know, with my dad as a kid. Um, and, uh, just like, you know, seeing, something projected on that big screen and just kind of feeling entranced and in all of it. And, um, uh, my dad was also, he's, he is also a, a painter. Um, mm -hmm. so there's always been, you know, um, art to look at around the house and, uh, you know, would he, you know, would take me to the museums and, um, there was always, you know, inspiration around. Um, and so when I, 
when I got to film school, like, you know, I didn't really know, uh, much about, you know, how films were made, like other, you know, I was kind of pretty naive and I think like everyone just like went in there being like, Oh, you know, maybe I'll become a director or maybe, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> or, or, uh, I knew the one thing I knew I didn't want to do was write. I knew I was not mm. a good writer and didn't want to be on that side of things. But, um, um, I, there was like a specific moment, um, or like one or two moments early on. Um, it was my, like my freshman year and a, a friend of mine had, uh, uh, enrolled in a 16 millimeter class and mm. he, he was just looking for somebody to help him out on like his first project. Uh, we were shooting on bull X's and, um, I wasn't even in enrolled in a film class at the time, but I offered to help out cause I was interested. And, uh, he basically, he handed me a light meter and was just like, okay, this is how you use this. Your job is going to be to like hold this bounce card and take <laughs> light meter readings and tell me what they are and I'll set the exposure and shoot it. And, um, so we did, and then he got the film back and it all came back like pretty nicely exposed for, you mm -hmm. know, black and white, uh, reversal. Um, and, uh, and I was, you know, like I was just kind of, uh, uh, like really in all of it, um, and, uh, found it inspiring. And then when I went and enrolled in like that, that 16 millimeter course myself, um, the, uh, very first project that I shot, um, you know, I, I, I got a couple friends to help, but I, I did the camera, I did the light meter. Um, and, uh, it was like an in-camera edit. We had to shoot everything, you know, to be like, you know, to work as a piece in camera. Um, mm -hmm. and it was one roll, uh, three minutes. And, um, the, f when we got the film back and played it in class i was like one of like two or three out of like 20 25 people where like it was all perfectly exposed yeah it's awesome and, <laughs> and so and like some people you know like forgot to like flip the one switch in the bowl x and like it just came out black and like it was just mm. like you know so something came out super blown out super under and it was just like uh perfect so then um, it was like, a, just like kind of like a vote of confidence. It was like, okay, like maybe, maybe I should do this or maybe I should look into this because it, it definitely, you know, uh, satiates like the creative, like the kind of like desire to be a visual artist of some sort. Mm. And, and, uh, and I guess I seemed to like either get extremely lucky or have some type of knack for, uh, exposure. Um, yeah. so um, I hear a lot of like you kind of navigating the camera side of, you said you were PA, then I, I believe you said you were kind of like an AC. Did you ever kind of, um, delve into gaffer key grip world or like the lighting? I'm curious as to how you started to figure out the lighting side of things. Cause that to me was the hardest thing to overcome was trying to figure out lighting as I was growing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, I did not really work as like on the G and E side at all. Um, I have a pretty funny story actually. There was, I, there was one job that I worked as a gaffer, um, <laughs> for, for a, a good friend of mine. I think that's the only reason that I got hired because, uh, there was definitely like no, uh, resume or skill set to <laughs> back it up. Um, and, uh, we were shooting in some old studio and, uh, um, there was like an old tungsten 5k head, you know, like standard mm -hmm. old tungsten studio package that comes with it. And, uh, my buddy went, you know, called for that to, uh, he was like, yeah, let's just get that 5k on and put it over there. <laughs> so I get it, I get it set up and I turn, <laughs> turn the light on and like within 60 seconds the entire head just bursts into flames oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that uh uh the those those old 5ks were were they were filled the inside of the heads were filled with 
Christmas lights uh, f- oh because they had just gosh. had a holiday party and used them as props. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was like that was my one experience working as a gaffer. Um <laughs> your one and only. That my was one it. and only. Yeah, that was <laughs> it. Um but yeah, the, um so learning to circle back, sorry. I'm like uh like super ADD brained and no, I'll probably that's, like that story was that story was brilliant. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> I love moments like that. It really yeah. does. I love it. <laughs> yeah. The, um but uh yeah, the uh Learning lighting, uh, I was also like, uh, I think the biggest challenge coming up. Um, and I feel like I learned, I guess I learned it from being an AC and, um, being able to like be close to the DPs that I worked for and just observe. Um, and like, you know, when I could ask questions, um, and, um, yeah, I, I, um, because yeah, cameras, I was always super comfortable with. Um, and I understood exposure pretty well, but the first like, uh, kind of half of my career at this point, I I feel, I feel like was like a lot of time was spent trying to learn how to like make things look like how I wanted them to, uh, with, with light. Um, and so, yeah, uh, I guess a lot of that was just from coming up under, un- working under other DPs and then shooting stuff myself and kind of failing at it and mm. failing at what I was going for and going back and thinking critically or running it, like being like, you know, running it by other people, asking other people, Hey, like, you know, I was going for this and I don't think it, I don't think I was successful. Like, do you have any feedback? Um, mm. Mm. and so yeah um which is funny because like kind of self-critical a little bit about your own work and that i I think there is uh, something good about being a little self-critical of your work to be able to continually improve upon it yeah totally um i I think i'm like my uh own biggest critic uh probably to it like almost like a detrimental uh like uh you know um uh, but, um, no, yeah, it, it, I mean, you know, I think it is definitely a good, uh, attitude to have if you're looking to actively, you know, improve. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's funny to, to say that like all now, like, uh, like I've been telling people recently, like, uh, lighting, lighting is like the, has become like the easy part now like it's actually I so agree no, right I, it's I no longer say, i don't want to say i agree yeah, yeah i don't want to say i agree like uh lighting is easy but i definitely have a such a better understanding of it now and it feels i, I think i feel more passionate about lighting than i do camera now than i did before personally cool yeah no well it's it's like uh yeah maybe not that it's easy but i think like um the the mystery of it has mm. been taken away a little bit. So like, and I feel like I, you know, I have control in a way that I didn't used to, you know, mm. um, uh, because like, yeah, I guess it's just a mix of like, you know, um, I mean, it really, once again, it just, it just comes back to exposure and how you like to expose and then knowing what lights to get to, get you in the the ballpark that you want to be in basically knowing where. how is your uh like do you think your relationships with certain key crew members like gaffer and your key grip have influenced kind of how you learned how to light as well have you brought on people that helped educate you while you were coming up oh yeah absolutely that's that's a great point actually that's probably like the other half of how i learned how to light was just you know um when i finally did start shooting or like I guess like get it when I did start shooting professionally, um, more and was able to, you know, hire, uh, and work with crews, um, that were, you know, on another level, then I definitely learned uh, a lot very rapidly, um, through collaborating with like a lot of different gaffers and key grips. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I know that you work with Sean and Mike from federal, uh, often and I started working with them 
I want to say just over a year or so ago, because I think initially I was pretty intimidated to work with them, like because they do such great work. And I felt like I wasn't maybe ready or good enough to work with them, but I kind of got over that and just started working with them. And they have changed the way that I think about lighting, think about rigging and just like the possibilities of what I envision, I think of in a certain way. And they're just like, oh, we could do it this way. And it's such a better way oh, to yeah. do things yeah they're absolutely. so good yeah they rule yeah. Shout, shout out shout out to mike and sean over at federal um <laughs> yeah. yeah totally man um yeah really leaning on and trusting uh your keys is like you know i think like critical to to your success um i want to kind of shift a little bit into like uh relationships as a dp and kind of growing with directors because something that I think I've started to realize is you know as you try to level up as a DP you always look at these directors that are creating big things and you're like I would love to work with that person but like nine times out of ten they have their circle of three to five DPs that they work with and they've built and accumulated the relationship with but a lot of what I see is like trying to grow with directors that are like not, maybe not at a similar place to you, but like you can grow with them and that's how you kind of formulate your relationships. I don't know if you feel similarly, but I'm curious as to how you formulated relationships with directors. Cause I know that you work with Ryan Scott in particular very closely and have for years. So I'm just, uh, I'm curious about your, uh, how you have grown with directors. Yeah. I mean, I, I have, um, I guess I'm lucky enough that like, uh, a lot of the people who kind of gave me opportunities at the very beginning of my career, like well before I even d d deserve to have any of those opportunities, uh, are still a lot of the people uh, that I work for today. Um, and um, um, I, you know, with Ryan, I, I it was just kind of like meeting him through. Um, like through rough cuts through like the community mm. kind of, uh, that he's created. And then, um, um, you know, just recognizing that, uh, well, I guess first off it was more along just like kind of getting along personally. Like, uh, I guess I, I, uh, I didn't know him very well. And then we went to, um, this filmmaking conference that our buddy John runs called, uh, uh, masters in motion, um, and, uh, I remember like Ryan posting in the rough cuts that he was going and, and, uh, who else, or, you know, other people should come. And I decided to, you know, get a ticket. And then, uh, when we were like figuring out lodging, um, Ryan needed a roommate there. And so I was like, Hey, let, let's, you know, let, let's, uh, let's bunk together for a couple of days at this filmmaking conference. And then we got to know each other, uh, pretty well over the course of those, those three days and, um, and just got along really well. And, uh, and it was just like, Hey man, we should work together. You know, we should, we should make something. Yeah. Um, so I think kind of connecting, at least for me, like connecting on a personal level, like first, mm. um, has seemed to be the way at least with like the, a lot of the directors that I have been working for for a long time and I'm still working for, mm. you know, it kind of just started out as friends. Um, my buddy right. who I like agree. gave me the first opportunity ever shot like a music video with him right out of film school, um, is, you know, a guy I still work with, uh, regularly. Um, <laughs> and so, um, and that was like, you know, 12, 13 years ago at this point. So, um, yeah. Do you, do you actively kind of market yourself to like new directors? Like, are you the one that sends emails or DMS to people or are you kind of just uh, not like that at all? I wish I could be more like that. I am like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, I, 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 I just like, uh, it's funny, man. Like I, you know, I mean, we live in a world now where like, you kind of have to do that, you know, to a certain mm. extent, I think mm. if, if, you know, I mean, it's, it's, or at least it's seen, maybe not have to, but it's like, uh, 
it's a convenient way to be able to meet people and kind of, um, you know, establish new relationships. But I, I don't think I've been very good at it or successful with it. Mm. I'm, I'm like, a, you know, like, like I said, like, I'd rather when I, when I like reach out to people that I don't know, I feel like I'm like outwardly like, <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know where, I don't know whether like it, it feels like I'm asking for something from them mm. other than mm. other, like, whereas I'm just like, you know, I don't know. I, it's, it's tough. It's, it's like a it's situation. I, I still don't even know how to wrap my head around. Um, mm. uh, and, uh, so yeah, to say like, I'm really bad at it. I'm really bad at marketing myself and I'm really bad at <laughs> making new connections. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, and so it's like, uh, uh, I always like joke. I'm like, it's like, it's like, you know, dating where it's like, I'm like one of those, like my only game is like, yo, just get to know me. Let's hang out and get to know me. I prom- <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, You're going to love me once you get to know me, but ex- that's ex- it. Ex- just ex- get to know ex- me. That's ex- <laughs> exactly. That's my only game, dude. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, that's funny. Um, I know that like the younger generation of, DPs that are coming up that are, you know, even younger than me. Um, I mean, myself included, my biggest thing is Instagram. It's such a huge, like we think of it as like our portfolio, our marketing piece, like that is like how we present ourselves. Like how different is today's world of like growing as a DP compared to maybe when you started? Um, I'm curious as to like what you've noticed change and, and um, how you maybe have adapted a little bit to it potentially. I think that, well, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm old, but I'm not old and like enough. Oh, you're not old, man. You're not old. Yeah. 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 I, I came, I came, I did. I definitely came up in the Instagram era for sure as well. Um, I, uh, in fact, like, you know, working with, there were like a couple other DPs that I was a seeing for like a little over a decade ago that like I w I was barely active on Instagram. And then they like kind of like connected with me after, after the job. And I saw them posting like stills and all that stuff. And it, it was like almost like a light bulb went off where I was like, Oh, duh. Like I should, I should, yeah. be, <laughs> I should be doing this. <laughs> this is, um, so I definitely, you know, uh, have used, I, I mean, it's, it's a great place to showcase your portfolio. It's like, you know, replaced business cards, I think in, in a much mm. more useful, uh, way. Um, but it was funny because, you know, prior to then, um, you know, like the advice, like I had been getting advice from, uh, you know, DPs who had already been doing this for like a decade or longer prior to me and it like you know they were in the world where like they would burn their show reels to a dvd and then walk around town oh, to all the man. production companies and drop them off and uh there was like you know like as brutal as that sounds like i, I think once again like there's a part of me that wishes that it was still that way because it kind of plays into mm-hmm. like like you said like uh you know like uh like let's hang out you know, right. like, like get yeah, to know yeah, me. Get, get to know me. You're gonna like me. Here's my here's my work. Yeah, you know, yeah. and meanwhile, let's shoot the shit and like uh, see if we hit it off or something. But um, yeah, like it's it's um, you know, in my eyes, it's like a it's a blessing and a curse. Like it, it's it's mm. made things more accessible, but it's also made things like more impersonal. If that makes sense, mm. you know, mm. um. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I see what you're saying. A hundred percent. Because uh, I think most of the time when people post things on Instagram or social media, I think the Im- impersonal part, what you're thinking, like what you're saying is maybe because everyone just posts the best version of themselves, like the, their, their highest quality work. And obviously I think there's positives to that. And like, in terms of like a business strategy, sure. Uh, but I, I do see what you're saying there. And uh, I'm curious as to if Instagram for you has a similar effect of like, uh, I don't know if you 
are like as addicted to Instagram as like, you know, some of the younger people are like, I see people working and I'm like, oh man, I wish I was working. Like, I can't believe this person got this job, T that type of mentality. Uh, do you have that type of like relationship with Instagram? Oh, absolutely, dude. Yeah. That, I mean, I would, I think it would be hard to find people who, uh, don't, don't right? in this day and age. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I wish that I, I spend a lot of time like wishing that it didn't have to be a part of my life. Uh, mm. <laughs> especially now, like, uh, being a dad and having kids, um, and like catch myself like mindlessly scrolling sometimes. And then I you know, like feel like such an, such an idiot. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm just like, Oh man, I hope I'm not like uh, leaving, uh, leaving a mark, uh, or some mm. type of inflicting psychological damage. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I would think that, you know, yeah, I try to like, uh, to monitor my use. I've been mm. like, uh, you know, I'll try to only get on there when like, uh, I need to post something or like, uh, yeah. Cause like, it's, just, I've just spent too much time, like you said, watching other people work and wondering, wondering, uh, what I did wrong or something, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I want to kind of tag along to that a little bit. Cause something that I noticed as like a common theme, uh, with some DPs and people that I'm close with is like how you deal with not working, how you deal with times where it's really slow. Um, do you find that you um, have other hobbies? Do you, I mean, you have a family, so I'm sure that takes up a lot of your time. Like, how do you cope and how do you manage uh, days, weeks, or even months sometimes of not really being hired? Um, I, uh, well, I guess, I mean, I definitely am like a hobby junkie. Um, oh, that's so cool. I it, wish I, <laughs> I don't have a hobby. Everyone asks me what my hobby is. I'm like, I don't know. I don't oh, think man. I have one. <laughs> I think working out to be honest for me is my uh, hobby, that's but a I don't great have hobby. like a true, yeah, I don't have like a true, like some people paint or some, I, I just don't have one yet. I don't yeah. think. I'm, I'm always, it's funny. I'm always torn whether like hobbies are good for you or whether they're distractions. Uh, mm. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. be, maybe be, too many hobbies is yeah, a distraction. Yeah, maybe. Or if like you get really into one hobby, but like to answer your question, yeah, I am like, um, I, I would actually say that like my first kind of like artistic or creative passion uh, is music. I, I, I've grown up. I see behind you. Yeah. I've grown up a musician. Um, I, you know, it's, it's definitely, I've grown, I like grew up playing in, in punk bands and, uh, always like, I don't know, music was always a really big part of my life. And then it's funny when I actually like, um, I, I like, Try, like when I was, when I decided that I wanted to make the transition from like to ACing and PAing and like working crew to be, to like shooting full time, I had, I actually quit the, the band that I had been playing in for eight years at, at that point wow. and kind of stopped playing music and just, just to solely focus on my career because yeah, it was like. I was getting busier and it, it was there, there were like, you know, we would book a show and then all of a sudden like a job would come in and then I couldn't play the show. And I was like, you know, kind of like letting everybody in the band down. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and then I would find myself at band practice and being like, uh, like, you know, like, this is like, I'm using my, I'm, this is a misuse of my time right now. I, I need to mm -hmm. like, you know, focus on, uh, on my career yeah. and doing this. Your full priority time. has changed. It seemed a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then that like, uh, kind of like, like spawned a period of like, uh, growth, like in a way, like giving that up and leaving that behind. I don't know if it's directly related, but it did work. Like it, it hap mm. I was able to make that transition that year. And, um, it began like a couple years of like a, you know, uh, of a period of like 
extreme growth in, in my career as a cinematographer. And then it's funny. It sh- and then the pandemic happened and, uh, mm. I was sitting around in alone in my <laughs> room for a couple months and, uh, the music thing kind of like came back with a vengeance, uh, just at like, mm. I think as a way of just keeping myself like sane through that period of time. But then like, as soon as things started opening back up, I joined a band for the first time in eight years at that, another eight years at that point. Wow. And, um, have been uh super active and uh now yeah that's like a, a constant hobby um that i have going along um i love you know. that yeah yeah so i love that you no keep going keep going oh no yeah i, I guess like um i was just gonna say like um you know i don't know um uh, i don't know if that answered the the question entirely but like the um I'm kind of like back in, in that, like, uh, that, that phase of like, okay, like I, the hobby brings me a lot of joy and creative fulfillment. Mm. And, uh, but is it like, am I like, you know, I'm just trying to find balance basically is, is the key, you know, my life is split Mm. very like evenly three ways right now where it's like, uh, you know, my career, my family and then the band and like the band is my social life at this point. Uh, They're the only friends that I get to see. Uh, and, uh, I'm, you know, that'll open up, I guess, as the kids get a little bit older and go to school and I find myself with Mm. more time on my hands again. But for right now, it's just kind of, um, yeah. Mm. I want to kind of bridge like a little gap. I think you said something along the lines of like, um, you had to focus on filmmaking. You quit the band. You had to focus on filmmaking to kind of experience that extreme growth. I think a lot of people might feel a similar way when they have a family as a filmmaker, because that is a really difficult thing to have is like balancing your wife or husband or having kids as well. And then you're in a period of your career where you want to be like, go, go, go travel, do this commercial, that one. But you also have your kids at home, your, your significant other. How have you kind of learned to work in that, that environment? Cause I know that you travel a lot and it, I am starting to travel a lot more myself. And I just got home two days ago. I was away for two weeks and it's not easy. It's no. really tough. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, I think that's going to be like an ongoing, you know, uh, learning experience. Um, it's definitely like, uh, something that is at like the front of my mind, um, all the time. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure you've heard it from other people. Like, uh, you know, the divorce rate is extremely high in this industry. Um, yeah. it's, it, you know, I've seen it happen. I've been around at least long enough now that I've, I've seen it happen to peers and colleagues and, um, you know, and it's, it's like, yeah, I, I, I think just the way that I've dealt with it, the one on the flip side, the one thing about our careers that, um, is actually really cool and like, uh, works in your favor so, like is that uh we don't have nine to fives we're not out of the house 40 to 50 hours a week so i i just tr- i try to double down on my off time you know um mm. with the family and and like put it like you know sure i might be on i might be away for a week or two weeks at a time um but then come home and like, maybe I have the next two weeks off and, and I can afford to have those two weeks off. So I just try and like, you know, dad, dad it up as hard as I can right. for, the, for the, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, and, yeah. and, and just keeping, you know, open communication with, with, uh, with my wife about everything and checking in mm. with, with her and asking, mm. you know, like, can I be, how can I be more helpful? You know, um, just trying to be, you know, empathetic to the, mm. the do you, rest do of you the think having, household. Do you think having your kids and your wife has influenced you saying yes or no to certain jobs? Definitely. Um, 
more so it like between like that kind of more so started with kids. Um, Mm. my wife worked full time before, um, before we had, we had our kids. Um, so, you know, she, she had like, she was out working five days a week and, uh, there was, you know, going away. It, It was still hard, but there was like, it was of less consequence. She was, you know, right. She had her own things going on. Um, but, um, um, yeah, I guess like there's it for this period of time where like we have two young children and they're both not in school yet. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm probably not taking a job that's gonna take me, like put me on the road for like a month or two at, right. at, at this point. Um, but, um, but then it's hard because there's the anxiety of like being a father who's providing for a single income household. And it's like, of you course. know, you don't know when you're, you know, you know, you don't know when your next job is coming in. So it's like, uh, you know, when it, it's like, uh, like I said, it's kind of something I think, uh, I'll be learning and figuring out, uh, how to manage, uh, the rest mm-hmm. of my life. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I appreciate you sharing. Um, you know, I, people that listen to this podcast regularly know that this is like a common theme of things that I ask, especially with people that I know are married and have kids because I get, I'm getting married next month. Oh, congrats. Eventually, ev- thank you. Um, eventually I'll have, hopefully I'll have kids of my own awesome. and self selfishly. The reason why I started this podcast is really to educate myself from people that have like done things that I will be doing as I get older and, um, it's a very selfish, it's super selfish. I just, I, I want to learn like, oh, and, yeah. and just, uh, you know, hearing your perspective as well. Um, so I really do appreciate you sharing some of that stuff. Oh, of course, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to kind of shift a little bit away from, you know, some of that stuff and more into kind of where you are as a DP now. And I'm curious as to how you see the role of a cinematographer now compared to when you started and if it's what you hoped it would be when you started, that makes sense. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I, oh man. Um, (laughs) I definitely, I mean, it's, it's definitely changed uh, as like, as Mm. far as the way that I see the role of cinematographer, but I think that, that has to do with like my own naivety and like preconceived notions of what a cinematographer is or like, you know, like the younger version of me saw it in one way. And then as I got actual experience working as it, I realized, Oh, it's less that and more of more of this to, to say like, like, uh, I used to get, um, I I think I used to think that it was definitely more of like, uh, uh, like more of a director position, uh, Mm. and like, let, like, let, you know, I used to get like, uh, in my head and kind of like, um, uh, like offended when you know a director i was working with wanted to take the camera and frame up the shot you know as i I used to be like oh no like that's my territory like (laughs) you're you're hiring me for my like compositional skills and i Mm -hmm. and like you know like and like uh and like uh now if like you know like uh now that i've been doing it for some time i i actually like really love working with super uh like visually oriented directors because I feel like it's a learning experience. Like somebody would, you know, frame, no two people are going to frame up the same shot. So it's like, uh, you know, it's cool to get a glimpse into somebody else's eye when they work that way. Um, it's, 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 it's morphed. I guess all that's to say is like, I used to think that it was like a, a job that, you know, where like, you're on par with the director to a certain extent less than, and now I think it's much more of like a, uh, like a role where you are in service, um, to Mm. the director. 
Um, like you're there to, you know, I mean, offer your ideas and offer your creativity when you can, but ultimately like you're, you're there to, you know, serve the vision of the director that you're working mm. with. Um, All right. Does, does, does that make sense? Sorry for the long yeah, winded. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think to go along with that a little bit is like uh, in the commercial space, how do you find that you maybe try to put your own voice into uh, commercials, for example, because, you know, you get the treatment, you get the agency boards, you get whatever. And it's so easy just to like do that thing that's presented yeah. in front of you. How do you find, or if you do, like your own creative voice, how do you spice things up a little bit, like experiment or pitch new ideas to in that world? That one's, a, that's an, ex, as I'm sure you know, is an extremely tough world to do that in because like not only right. are you answering <laughs> to a director, but you're answering to an entire like village of uh, <laughs> clients and yeah. creatives. Uh, so it's like, a, you know, I, I, once again, I, I, you know, I, I, I still only interface with the director on all of those things. And then it kind of becomes their battle, um, mm. to, to run it up the chain and get it approved. But I, 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 you know, I just like, um, I like to leave like enough space when I'm working to f find inspiration in the moment. You know, mm. and then could you elaborate? Like, how do you how do you find that space? What does that mean? A little bit more, if you don't mind. Uh, like, uh, not you know, like you, you go and do a commercial job, and there's boards, and uh, like you, like you said, like there's like you know, you have a whole roadmap of like what to execute, and then mm -hmm. so like uh, you do all of the necessary prep work to make sure that you know you you. I like to look at it as like okay, like I. I can fall back on this. I am prepared to do and execute this, um, as like mm -hmm. the bare minimum of what I can deliver. Right. But then as we're like setting up the shot, if I see something or like, if I'm like some, you know, some inspiration strikes on set while we're like in the middle of it and I'm like, Hey, like then I'll often just kind of call the director over and just be like, Hey, like, you know, like check this out or like, I just found this or I just thought of this. Like, I know that we're setting up for this, but maybe this is like a better version of, of that. And, uh, and it, it you know, it's like sometimes it's like, Oh yeah, let's, let's do that. And then it becomes, mm. it becomes like on the director to kind of like sell that up the chain or it's kind of like, Oh uh, no, like, you know what? We should just, we should just do this one the way we plan for it. But that's a good idea that we could maybe introduce, you know, on that setup mm. or like, in you know, like, um, it's, it's, I, I, I like to work, you know, I like to work kind of intuitively. Um, I, you know, I do whatever planning is necessary for the job, but I'm definitely not like an over planner, uh, uh or like, uh, mm. so, like there's like, like I like to, uh, you know, I guess that's how I like to leave space. Like I don't, I, I kind of want to leave, you know, like um, have some spontaneity. Ha on set. Yeah. Leave room to have some spontaneity and like chase an idea that feels mm. inspiring in the moment. Um, and I guess other ways of doing that are like, you know, by doing whatever you can to like move quickly and get ahead and leave yourself that space. Like if, if you're, you know, bogging yourself down with like some really big, uh, setup that like is ultimately going to eat a lot of time out of your day where, when you like, you could be using that time to, I don't, I like explore, you know, something different or something more inspiring, perhaps like I'll, I'll try and get ahead of that and like, you know, mm -hmm. see what everyone's feeling about that. Or is it like, or if we should just continue course, you know, um, I guess, I guess that's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you've, as you've gotten to these bigger productions, your crew size obviously gets a little bit bigger. Have you felt any sort of like in, intimidation as you've grown in crew size? Has your, um, was leadership 
something that was difficult to you, for you in the beginning or like communicating what you wanted um, in the beginning? And like, how has that kind of changed now as you've, you know, you're way more experienced, but your crew size might be a little bit bigger? Um, it, I don't think I ever felt, I, I think I have, I, I have a hard time articulating myself uh, in general. So I think that communication is, uh, is like always, uh, always an issue. Like I said, I'm like very visual, uh, you know, like, uh, ADD, like left brained. Is it left brained? Is that the creative? I don't even know. Uh, it's just like, I, uh, my head, I my head's in the clouds. Left, right yeah, brain. My, yeah. Right brain's like the logical side. Left, yeah. Right. Uh, right. my head's in the, yeah, like, the right. in, think... yeah, in the clouds at all times. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so like, it's, it's very hard. Uh, I think that some people might have a hard time, uh, following me when I'm like, uh, trying, to, you know, trying to excitedly explain something and I have to like remind myself to slow down and like, you know, I, like I'll, I'll, I'll get excited and kind of manic and get ahead of myself very, very quickly. Um, but, um, uh, um, I, I don't cruise the crew size thing. I don't think I ever felt like, um, intimidated just about having to lead or helm, uh, like, a, a sizable crew until like, uh, you know, like until like you're in a situation where everything is like kind of going wrong and then, and then you're like, Oh, oh man, yeah. this is a big crew. Like there's a lot of money being spent and, uh, <laughs> everybody's looking at me right now. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, that o o only in those moments does it become intimidating. Uh, but, uh, other than that, um, and I'm sorry, what was like the other half of this question? Uh, cause it, you know, uh, it I think like, it was just more about, yeah, that was, that was, that was, I think you kind of, got the gist of it there. I was just more in terms of like, um, I guess just understanding how you maybe have learned how to become a better leader as a DP, because I feel like that is like a lot of the job is of course, you know, putting the camera somewhere, doing the lighting, but it's directing your crew to be able to accomplish what yeah. you're looking to, and, and to more, accomplish there. I think like more importantly, keeping your crew engaged. You know, um, mm. that, that, that's like the most important, uh, in, in, in like uh, that I've like leadership skill, uh, that I think I've found where it's like you, if your crew is engaged, they're, you know, they're going to show up for you, I think a little bit more than if they're just, you know, kind of checked out. So I, I really try to be, um, I guess collaborative in, in the mo like, you know, I really mm. like, I want everybody to, to weigh in on what we're doing. And I want, I want people to throw ideas at me constantly. And I want people to like pitch me on stuff, you know? Um, yeah, absolutely. Because, um, ultimately it is a collaborative medium that we work in at the end of the day. And, and I think that everybody, you know, goes home from work a little more fulfilled knowing that they, you know, really contributed something to, to the mm. images we made that day. Um, rather than just like, uh, you know, uh, like spend a day working, uh, they like, like everybody likes to call it a neck down, you know, mm. <laughs> um, where yeah. they're just kind of like taking orders and it's like, you know, uh, right. okay, put that C stand right. over there, put that, that light over there, use this diffusion, put it up mm. over there. Like I, 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 yeah, I was going to ask how, like, on like the lighting side, how fixture specific are you or are you not really? Not, not anymore. Um, I mean, there's like a couple things that like, I know that I like, you know, that I'll make sure to have on the order. Like it's the, that's, that's just more of like something to like, uh, that I know that I can fall back on if, uh, if, if right. something's not working, but like, um, but anymore, no, I, I like to like let, you know, um, the lighting department kind of determine the, uh, the fixtures that we're going to use. I, I, I yeah. definitely have, I tried to talk to my gaffer in broader strokes, um, and kind of let them 
do their thing and then kind of come in like, you know, they, they get 85% of the way there. And then, then I come in and kind of finish the, finish the last 15%. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I noticed that you, you're part of, um, local 600. What was your decision to kind of go union apparent, like instead of just not really? Yeah. Um, well I, you know, want to work on, uh, uh, movies and TV shows and mm. union union work. Um, I mean, I, I would love to, uh, at some point, you know, get enough union work that I could qualify for healthcare for my family. Um, <laughs> so, so, uh, it, it was, yeah, it was more of just like, um, there was an opportunity to join, um, like a couple years back and, um, um, you know, I, I knew it would just open up a certain kind of like, a uh, level of work that I would be allowed to do. And, um, um, yeah. And so I, I joined and I joined as, um, as a camera operator, actually not as a cinematographer, mm. um, because I actually still, uh, really, especially on those like union shows, there's, there's still quite a bit, um, to learn, uh, working on like sets of that scale that like, I, I have not been able to, you know, I've not been the cinematographer on anything, you know, remotely as huge as some of the union Close stuff that, that I've yeah. operated on. Um, so it's, 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 it's cool to still be able to work under DPs and, uh, and continue mm -hmm. learning, um, as, as a camera operator. So, um, I love that. I, yeah. I feel like I don't get to experience that much. I, every so often I get to operate, but very rarely do I ever see another DP work. And most of the time it's just like behind the scenes stuff. Um, do you find yourself like, how do you, ed how do you continue to educate yourself in this field? I feel like at a certain level, it's hard to, yeah. Like YouTube can only get you so far. Totally. Like how do you, yeah. Um, just, I, I guess just by making those connections or reaching out to other like DPs that I admire, I, I like picked up a mentor for a year, a couple of years back when I was operating on, um, uh, uh, it was, I was operating on a music video for like an, an ASC DP who was in town and, uh, oh, wow. we just hit it off and I just kind of asked him, That's I was so like, cool. I was just <laughs> like, yo, could you mentor me for a little bit? And so, yeah, we did like hopped on zoom calls for like a month uh, at once a month for over the course of a year. And, um, um, was able to learn a lot through him. I, I'm also friends, uh, with a lot of, uh, uh, cinematographer, well, not a lot, but I'm friends with a couple cinematographers who, um, you know, the one I went to film school with, who's like out there completely killing it. There's other people, you know, who are definitely like, um, other peers who are on Hills that, you know, way further down the line than I am. Um, and I, you know, pick their brains. Um, uh, there's, there was a gaffer that I started working with, uh, like a year and a half, two years ago for some, there was like a string of jobs that I shot in the state of Oklahoma. Weirdly enough, I'd never like, oh, wow. never yeah, set foot weird, there that's a, that's a, in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, and then, uh, in 2022, like, uh, like got a job there that kicked off like, uh, yeah, over like from like 2022 to 2022, 23, I think I shot in Oklahoma six I think I shot six jobs there and, uh, Oof. I got hooked up with this gaffer, um, who's 79 years old and still working. Oh, he's been through it all. That guy's been through it all. Dude. He, he's a, he's a legend, man. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. he, he, be, he became a mentor. Um, and so like, I've, I've learned like, uh, so much just from working with him over, over the last year. And, you know, we talk mm -hmm. all the time and he's worked with other, you know, uh, DPs that I admire who then like, I'll be, I'll, I'll just kind of 
ask him like, Hey man, like, do you mind maybe like texting the so-and-so and and just seeing if they'd be willing to like have a conversation with me? Uh, Mm. I'd love to ask, like pick their brain about some stuff. So yeah, yeah, I guess it's just tapping your network, um, for, you know, uh, continued education, uh, to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah. That's another purpose of this podcast is selfishly. It's what I do. Absolutely. (laughs) It's, it's, it's great. Um, I don't know if this is like a, a question that you could even answer really, but, um, like, what are you, what do you hope to accomplish in the next couple of years? Like, what are some things that you have yet to maybe do that you're like that, that would put me at that next step or like this type of thing is where I would like to be at next, next year, whatever. Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, um, I, shooting, um, shooting a feature, I think would be one. I've never, mm. I've never shot a feature. Have you done if you never done one? Nope. Okay. I've been like, um, I've been sent scripts and I've been like, uh, probably like too choosy. Um, <laughs> I like, think that's fair. You should be. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> it's a commitment. Yeah, no, it is a commitment. <laughs> um, but it's like, you know, I, I, had the time before and like now I'm in a situation where time <laughs> time, time is at a premium. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know. I probably should have, should have like, uh, got one in, uh, just to at least get the reps in, you know, um, get the workout. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's a potential feature that I, I like might like an indie that I might be shooting towards the end of the year. Hopefully like if it gets funding, so, hopefully that step will, will get made. But, um, I guess, yeah, I don't know. It's so hard to see that now because like, like I said, like I'm in like this, I I really just want to like my, my goal for right now is to like kind of just be able to sustain the career that I've Mm. built up until this point. Like, uh, I want, you know, I, I, I'm in a really pretty good balance of like, like I said, like life, uh, uh, career and hobby. Uh, and I would let, I, you know, I, whatever can kind of keep that going for a little while. I'm until like my kids get a little bit older and then I feel like I can kind of, you know, pound the pavement like again a little bit more and like yeah. hustle, hustle a little bit more, but for, for, you know, I pivoting into narrative work at some point in, in my life, I think that that's definitely Mm. a goal. And, um, yeah, just to, I mean, just to be able to like, I I don't know, I'm not in like, uh, I don't feel like in a, 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 me, I think it's just the season of my life that I'm in right now, but I don't feel like an extreme desire to like, uh, like level up or get ahead or like, mm. you know, I'm kind of like, I just kind of mm. like want to like in a way slow down and like really appreciate, mm. uh, where I'm at and, uh, the time that I'm getting to spend with my kids. And like, you know, as long as I get to like make a couple cool little creative pieces over the year, uh, that's, that, that is like, that's kind of enough for me. But yeah, ultimately I think, you know, maybe pivoting more into narrative work and, um, and some more storytelling kind of, uh, centric stuff. Also like, yeah, I don't know. There's, um, there's some other stuff in, in the, uh, like coming up that, uh, I'm pretty excited about that aren't necessarily narrative. They're more like experimental, but like, that was always like, a, I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was always, um, an important, um, and like really like experimental film was, uh, always super inspiring to me coming up as a, you know, film school kid. Um, so getting, getting mm-hmm. to do that a little bit more art, art films. <laughs> Amazing. Weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh I got one last question for you. It's uh, my standard last question. Yeah. Um, I guess, I guess it would be, you know, you in film school. I guess you know the first time you saw that sixteen mil footage and you realized that you were one of the only ones that 
exposed it properly, that, that, that version of you is sitting at a table and across from that version of you is you now at this level with family, with kids, with the years of experience and the work behind what you have done. What advice would you give that younger version of you? Oh man. I guess uh, I would say I would tell that younger version of me to, um, you know, uh, cut, cut, like cut the bullshit, drop, drop the ego and, uh, and like, um, you know, just like put, you know, put in the work, uh, both on yourself and, uh, and like, you know, and the actual like tangible work that, uh, that you're doing, like, uh, I, I like there was, you know, I don't know, go to, go, like, go to therapy regularly, <laughs> take, take care, take care, <laughs> take care of it. Like, t you know, take care of your mental health. And, uh, mm. you mm. know, I think that like, uh, yeah. Cause like that, you know, the beginning of this career, I guess like, it, you know, it's easy to feel really lost and like, uh, uh, it's confusing. It's to, I don't know, kind of find your way. And, uh, I just like, uh, I feel like I got hung up on a lot of like unnecessary bullshit, uh, you know, in the first half of, of my career. And I, I, I wish that I just would have, uh, you know, let, let, let it go a little bit more and just, um, mm. focused on the work and not, not have let myself get, you know, I don't know. It's, I feel like I just spent a lot of time, like, kind of beating myself up for no reason, you know? And so I guess mm. just go a little, go a little easier on yourself. Thank you for sharing that. I do appreciate it. Of um, course. All right. So where can people find you if they, if you want to share your Instagram or website or, you know, feel free to share whatever you comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, my website, uh, is my name, Drew Uh, Instagram is at Drew, uh, uh, underscore Sirocco and um yeah all right thank you dude i really appreciate you uh, hey. taking some time out of your day to come on here thanks man yeah I, I, it's it's been a pleasure really um like i said it means a lot this was this was fun okay everyone thank you for listening today hopefully you have a great day peace out so thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Creative Gap Podcast. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode, and if you did, there are a ton of other episodes for you to listen to as well. Check us out on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, whatever you, wherever you want to get your podcast, you can find it. Also, be sure to check us out on Instagram at Creative Gap for future updates, upcoming guests, and a lot of short clips. And if you want to support the podcast in a deeper way, feel free to join our Patreon community. And for those of you who already joined the Patreon community, thank you. And for those of you who are new to the show, welcome. Hopefully you enjoy it. And for those of you who have been here for a long time, thank you. So that's all we got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. We'll see you next time. Peace out.